So welcome everybody Thanks for joining tonight. Um, tonight is the very first Deal Diva happy hour at where we're going to talk about, um, well during the happy hours we'll talk about all things online marketing, offline marketing, sourcing products for sale on your e-commerce site, on Amazon, eBay, Shopify, but each one of the happy hours is going to be focused on just one particular topic. And tonight, we're going to talk about discovering fanatical niche markets. And I actually thought of this uh, just a couple of days ago while I was out doing some research and doing some shopping and all these n fanatical niche markets just jumped out at me. And I was like, you know, I should probably do a webinar and just share with people what, um, what I'm finding. And um, so... I just, you know, to yesterday decided to do this, and thank you all for taking your time out of uh, your busy evenings and your busy weeks to join in. So we're going to talk a little bit about discovering fanatical niche markets for online sellers. So my name is Barbara Drazga, and uh, I've got a, a nickname called the Deal Diva. Somebody else actually gave me the nickname at an auction. The gentleman I've been bid against many times and would win the bid quite often. Um, when he was, we were bidding against each other, and one day he just turned around and he said, "You know, you're just a deal diva," and he didn't mean it in a in a very nice way. But I thought it was the coolest Can thing, so mouth? I decided to adopt that moniker in a positive way. And I'm I'm good at finding deals and negotiating deals, but it kind of does work for me. So anyway, tonight we're going to talk about discovering fanatical niche markets for online sellers. So you probably want to know who I am and why on earth you should listen to me about finding fanatical niche markets. So I'm an ex-reporter from way back when. I used to write for many business journals. Uh, and one of the things you had to do to get the job, um, because I was, a, I was not an on-staff um, on reporter, I was a freelancer. So I would have to pitch ideas to the different editors at these business magazines, um, asking them uh, for the ability to you know, pay me to write this article. So I would have to go out and do research on business-related topics. Some of the topics I wrote on were like the business of motorsports, small business, uh, invoice factoring. But I, had, I didn't know anything about those topics until I went out to research them in order to pitch them to the editors. So I got really good at identifying what some hot topics were in niches as opposed to broad topics that everybody, um, you know, everybody writes about. And that's how I got the skill, the skill set, I think. And now it's just second nature. I see small niches everywhere. So I've been an e-commerce seller since 2002. That's not a typo. I've been selling information products online in B2B markets specifically. Now, B2B means business to business. So me and my team produce information products in the global energy industry, pharmaceutical, biotech, and technology industries. And I've been doing that since 2002. And when I started, I didn't even have a clue how to send an email. I'm not kidding. I didn't know. And there were no, none of the tools that exist today existed then. Um, so the research now is so much easier than it was 15 years ago when I got started selling online. I've been an Amazon seller since 2015. Um, I have a physical products company that's local. I sell bedding called Posh Linens. And um, I actually fell into selling bedding because it was a niche market that I fell upon at an auction. And we're going to talk about how to use auctions to find niche markets as well during this presentation. And then I just launched DealDivaWholesale.com uh, where I share, I, I source things wholesale. That's it. That's what I do. Uh, wherever I sell it, it doesn't matter what my sales channel is. Uh, I source 100% wholesale. I'm also moving to private label this year. So I'll be going to China in April is my plan. So um, uh, you can visit DealDivaWholesale.com and check out what we're doing there. I'm going to pause this for half a second because somebody just raised their hand, and I want to go back and make sure there's nothing, um, there's no problem with the recording. So let me just stop the share here and go back and make sure that we don't have any issues here with the recording. So I just wanted to let you know that if you have any questions, please go ahead and put it in the chat. Raising your hand, as long as Ms. Barber can you mute, mute everyone. I did mute everybody on my end. So all right, it looks like we're having an issue with you guys not um, or having too much noise on your end.
So I can mute you on my end, but I can't hear you, but everybody else on the call can hear what's going on in your living room right now. So wherever it is you're listening. So I'm going to ask you all, please, please, please do me a favor and hit the mute button on your phone or on your computer or wherever you're listening. And that way everybody who's on this webinar is going to be able to hear what's going on. So if you could all go ahead and do that, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It says, um, Jeff is saying you're getting drowned out by the other noise. That's not good. That's not good, guys. So go ahead and uh, please mute your phone. Pretend like you're in a conference room with the speaker up on stage, and you wouldn't be talking in that room loudly, right? So I'm going to ask you to just pretend like this is a, a speaker's room where you've got a speaker on stage. That's me. And you guys are being real quiet in the background just so that everyone can hear what I'm saying. So thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. And thanks for your patience on this webinar. I know that, you know, technology issues can sometimes be a little glitchy, but we'll figure them out. So I'm not worried about it. We'll figure it out. Oh, so go ahead and put all of your questions in the chat, and I'll get to them towards the end. I'm going to switch back over here to my little presentation. You can go visit dealdivawholesale.com. I just put some new um, – some new uh, content up there today and I'll try to put content up there every single day. That is my personal goal for this year is to get great content out every day. So here was my challenge when I started selling on Amazon and started selling wholesale. Um, I used to wholesale, uh, used to find sources for wholesale first and then run their product lists through um, software tools like Price2 um, and then I I joined um, Dan and Eric's uh, the, the Wholesale Formula last year, and they do sourcing a little bit differently. They call it reverse sourcing, where you find your products on Amazon first. You find what's selling on Amazon first, and then you use a different software tool. I call I use Jungle Scout to um, identify the, possi the profit possibility of those products, right? So here I am sitting in front of Am Amazon.com and thinking, okay, now I have this brain blank. I have no idea what to search for. I'm on Amazon and everybody else is going to the, you know, the best sellers list and the, the trending, but all of other, all the other sellers are going to those same lists and um, doing research on those same lists. Well, I have too much competition there is what I thought. So where do I start typing in? What I just type in broccoli and see what happens. Yeah, you can do that. But I decided that, um, that it would be better for me to identify what kind of market I want to look for and then find uh, product ideas that meet those criteria. So for instance, um, what is a fanatical niche market? This, this is a question that I asked myself and these are the answers I came up with and you might have some of your own answers, but here's some of the basics. A large enough group to sell mid-range range volume to. So fanatical market could be People who like to crochet pink doilies. That's way too small a market for me um, in terms of volume, how, what I'd be able to sell, the, sell to them and how many people are in that market of people who like to crochet little pink doilies, right? So another um, criteria is people who desperately want anything related to that passion. And I'll give you some ideas as we go through this presentation and you'll go, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll give you just one right now. How about uh, unicorns? There are people who absolutely adore unicorns or owls, O-W-L, owls, or skulls, anything with skulls on it. And it could be any product as long as it had that kind of design on that product, right? So you want people that will buy any kind of product as long as it's related to their passion. And then you want people with disposable income because if you're trying to market to people who don't have money to buy anything, um, it's going to be a you're going to have bigger returns, you're going to have fewer sales, you'll just have more problems. So you, you want people in a market that have disposable income, whether it's geographically or the types of products they're buying or the price point of the products. <coughs> and I know this sounds real simple, but people who shop online. Because, you know, my mom, bless her heart, she was in her 70s when she passed, and I couldn't even get her to use a camera, a digital camera. She was uh, still using these little um, disposable cameras. She would go out and she'd get a disposable camera and she'd use it. And then anything that had to do with technology, there was no way. She wasn't going to touch it. So there are actually people, um, demographics, that don't shop online. And that's okay. But for our purposes, we want to look for fanatical niche markets that we can reach 
online, no matter what our sales platform is. If it's Amazon or eBay or Shopify or own e-commerce sites, we want people um, who are large. There's large enough we can make money. They desperately want anything with their pa passion on it. They have disposable income and they shop online. Okay, moving along. So here's what I would suggest you do because you and I could walk into the same store or the same um, facility or walk outside, take a walk in the park, and we would see completely different things. So for instance, uh, you remember the magic eye puzzles? They, I, I got this image off of Amazon today, so I know the books are still out there. But when I was younger, in my teenage years, for the life of me, I could not refocus my eyes. You know, you have to kind of like cross your eyes a little bit or and like look past the image to get that image to pop out, whatever the hidden image was. Uh, so I had to train my eyes to relax and see past what was in front of me. And I thought that was a great analogy for um, finding niche markets. For instance, uh, just a couple of days ago, I had poured some bird seed out in my backyard, and every morning at my kitchen window, I see these beautiful birds, the red-breasted birds and all these. Well, I'm in Arizona, guys, so it's 70 degrees here. For those of you who are not in a warm climate, you might not be seeing the same thing. You might be seeing too much snow. But for me, I am, uh, I'm seeing the birds eating their bird seed. And my brain immediately went through to ornithology, people who love anything that has to do with birds. And then subcategories from there, people who love uh, blue jays. And you could put a, a blue jay image on a t-shirt, a pillowcase, a blanket, uh, you know, whatever, a, a pair of leggings, um, a hat. So I look for the, the niches, and then what can I put that niche on? Where you might have looked out my window and said, man, those birds are making a mess out there. I saw opportunity. So I'd like to challenge you to change your vision. And whatever you look at, in whatever store, wherever you're walking throughout the day, uh, whatever you're doing throughout your day, try to look past that, like the magic eye image. Try to look past that and see the opportunity behind it in terms of niche market. Does that make sense? I'm going to uh, pause over and come back over here to, um, let's see, to the chat and just make sure that we're all on the same page here. Someone is still not muted and we hear you. It sounds like you are in the kitchen with glass clanging. Let's see which one of you guys is doing your dishes? <laughs> Quit it. <laughs> Hello. All right. Sounds like someone is watching the news. All right. Whoever's watching the news. Um, that's awesome because you can get some great niche ideas, but please, please turn off your microphone so we can't hear you. Jeff, thank you. There's a microphone icon on the lower left corner. Click it to mute yourself. That's you guys. That's you guys. So in Zoom, there's a little microphone icon in the lower left corner. Please, right now, right now, go and click on that to mute yourself if you haven't already so we don't hear you doing dishes or watching the news. So I'm going to give you guys just a second to do that because we want everybody to hear what I'm saying without me having to scream over the noise of like a bar. All right. Awesome. So it looks like we got that under control. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. You guys rock. All right. Let me go back here to scare, share screen again. Let's see where I'm at. All right. So we'll go back over here. And Magic Eye, so moving along, change your vision, change how you look at things, look for opportunity past what is in front of your eyes. For instance, yesterday I went into Barnes & Noble, I just like bookstores, so I go in there and the magazine section, the magazine section is just life with ideas. It is a gold mine, um, and it's a gold mine for discovering niches within niches within niches. So this is, you've all been in Barnes & Nobles, or many of you have, I'm sure, but a bookstore, they organize their magazines by uh, category. So this is a sports, I think, um, sporting or stand shape category, something like that. But within that category, there's people who run, cycle, paddle, uh, light guns and ammo, um, people who run mountains. I, I like running mountains, so that's a whole subset of being a, a runner. A mountain runner is a subset of being a, a runner. And then there's hikers. So these people have different interests within their niche. So what you do is you go ahead and just pick up one of those magazines. Popular science. science I got popular science. And you just start flipping through it. And you look at the advertising and the articles. So I'm just, you know, jumping in. Here we go. 
the art of artificial limbs. How cool is that? Now, is that a sub niche that meets our criteria? Runners who have an artificial limb, I've seen plenty of them. So what kind of needs do they have? Do they have special needs in clothing, in shoes, in, um, in workout needs? And you can start your research by going on Amazon and ty typing in artificial limbs, right? Or amputation socks. And then um, run your tools like Jungle Scout on top of that to see what else comes up and dig deeper and follow the rabbit trails. But tonight we're just going to talk about this is totally offline. You know, we're not going on Amazon, nothing tonight. This is totally what you can do without even being in front of a computer or on Amazon to get ideas of what to search for on Amazon, right? So if you just flip through, there's a guy who's made a custom, custom helicopter, custom chopper, right? So how about people who um, like building kit airplanes? That's a whole sub-market. And do they meet our criteria of... What are our criteria? People who desperately want anything related to the passion, large enough group, people with disposable income. You think people who can afford ten, twenty thousand dollars on a kit airplane, if not more, have disposable income? And yes, they do shop online. So just pick up some magazines and start flipping through what you find. It's kind of fun to, to look at the advertisements. I love the pages in the back, right, with all of these classified ads, because you know that these are things that people are selling to this market. So these are all ideas for things that you can either wholesale or private label. And it's just a starting point for wide shoes. Check out that niche, right? Wide shoes. You see that, that one right there? Okay, so there's someone selling shoes that are just for wide feet. How about runner shoes or hiking shoes? Even niche it down further for wide feet. Uh, so there's just all sorts of fun, just awesome, great stuff in here. Now it's, <laughs> I'm getting sucked into the magazine. But pick up um, magazines you'll get in the mail, AARP. No judging, I'm getting up on that age. I do get this magazine. But there are all kinds of, this baby boomer market meets every one of our criteria, right? But look at the ads inside. Oh, I love this, right? They have a must-have section. What a, great, what a great section to start doing your research on in AARP, must-have, and then dig in from there. Um, travel, right? Anyway, okay, so... When you go to your dentist office, or ladies and some guys, when you go to get your pedicure, or if you go get your hair done, ask them if you can take some of their older magazines. Cosmo, People, GQ. Okay, so yes, I did choose this one for a reason. I am a single girl after all, and he's just cute. But um, other than that, <laughs> if you just look at the ads in here, what do guys in this demographic want? You know, what are they looking for? They're star aficionados. Shoes. Guys are truly into shoes. Um, wine, okay? So they have this whole section in here on um, what you should buy for the new year. All of these, what you should buy goodies, right? So just start digging through the, the wider, um, wider market magazines in order to find niches. And then dig into the really niche magazines like... AARP um, in order to find, or, or a magazine on golf, okay? Golf. Huge market meets all our criteria, right? Now, I'm sure there are a lot of sellers in the golf market, but could you create a bundle with different wholesale items? Yes. Could you private label a product that's maybe um, a, 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 a version of a product that's being offered to the golf market? And can you find those kind of products by opening up one of these magazines and just looking at what's available? Okay, and read the articles too. Don't just look at the advertisements, but also read what people are talking about uh, because that's, that's important to them at this time. And it might be a piece of hardware or a certain glove or, or something or a certain cleat or, um, or something related to golf that is new that you can kind of jump in on um, as it's come to market. Okay, so that's bookstores, magazine ad articles. Another thing I found in the bookstores, oh, this was fun. They have an entire section of all of their, their, little, their little calendars, 50% off. I bet these are going to be 70% off or 75 next week, too. There are so many. Look right on top here. I'm pointing to my screen like you like right? Corgis. Okay, so not just dog lovers. Corgi lovers. Um, Great Dane lovers. Uh, Schnauzer lovers. Chihuahua lovers. So... That's a niche within a niche, right? People who love dogs, maybe they like one breed of dog or cats. Maybe there are people who just like Maine Coons, etc. Okay, so go 
go to Barnes and Noble or your local bookstore and look for all. Of, I bought this. This is cool, right? Yoga, yoga. That's that's a niche. It's you know pretty a lot of um, people in this niche, but maybe you can find a sub niche. Yoga for kids, yoga for animals, right? So just look past what you have in your hand and ask what else can I relate to yoga that might be a niche market that meets my criteria. So go to a bookstore this week if you can or this weekend and look through all those yummy calendars and just to get ideas for niche markets. Okay, what was next? Let's see. Well, let me switch over here and see if you guys, I know I'm going a million miles a minute here. Um, so let me switch back over, see if you have any questions here in the chat, anything I need to address. You can see the calendars. Barbara, you're still on screen share and we can't see what you're showing. Um, I'm not sure what you mean you can't see oh you couldn't see me in that little bitty oh okay well, let's do this I will just rewind boom. and we will show you boom AARP magazine right and all kinds of ideas for niche markets in a magazine like this I like go into the classified section right hearing aid but it's not a hearing aid Right, so maybe things, um, devices, or things for people who are um, hard of hearing through, due to age, or like me, I have to wear my reading glasses. Right, maybe large print books. Okay, so popular science. Right, so just flip it open to anywhere in order to get an idea for. Hmm, there we go. There's some cool watches. Um, trash reaches Arctic waters. So right away, off the top of my head, I think, okay, um, renewable energy, uh, how to uh, recycling, right? Maybe recycling bins or recycling enzymes or anything to do with recycling. But what you'll do is, all, I didn't open this bef before, this page, right? So you open up, you look at the heading of the article and you say, huh, this has to do with recycling. I'm going to type in recycling in Amazon and see what comes up or recyclable, right? Um, wearable, look at this, check this out. Wearable technologies, listen to your skin. How cool is this? Could you type in wearable technologies in the Amazon? I'm sure that's a pretty big niche, but you can play around with it and see whether or not you can niche it down. Okay, golf, we already talked about that. GQ, love GQ, right? Because of all the potential niche markets. So, it tells me what's important to guys in this particular niche market, high-end shoes, who to thunk, right? Golf, that's an easy one. People Magazine, things like this that you get at your doctor's dentist office, ask them to take it, ask if you can have the old ones, don't just take it, you know, but ask if you can have the old ones. They love to give this stuff up. And you'll have entire pages of um, things of, that people are interested in in that niche when you just flip through them, okay? You flip through and you see what kind of bikes they're they're riding. You see what they're eating. You see what they're listening to, right? Do you find niches that are important to these particular people or to this demographic that meets our criteria, right? Golf, Cosmopolitan was another one. Okay, this, is, this one's great. All right, TJ, go ahead and mute for me, please. Work out. I mean, that's kind of a no-brainer. But I also like going to the classified sections of any of these because the classified sections are things that people you know they're making money on because they're paying huge money to be in a classified section of a magazine right okay sports illustrated another one now, yeah a lot, I know some of you are probably thinking well you know sports is locked down NFL we, we can't sell this anything that's got the NFL logo on it well there are sports fans that love all sorts of stuff that are not Gated or restricted on Amazon. You just okay. So look at this. Just this image alone. Okay, this guy is boxing. But what's he wearing? Look what's on his arm. For example. So just think past. What do boxers need in order to protect themselves? And how about the boxing bag itself? Right. How about uh, uh, I don't know if the the boxing bag blows up. I don't know much about it. But how about a pump for the boxing bag? Bag. Right. So you're just going to use things like this as a starting point. So that's just. An, an example, and I urge you to, um, there's my yoga fix, right, yoga positions, um, so I urge you to go to a bookstore and check it out, but that's, that's just the beginning of it, I've got more, so let me check the chat here and make sure we've got this mute issue resolved, Barbara, thank you for doing this tonight, I love when you have, share your knowledge, you hope, I am recording it, okay, um, 
Oh, that's right. The president's farewell speech is tonight. Well, there's a great niche market, right? But I am recording this. Um, okay, so I'm just going to keep going here. So the next thing you can do is, I get this in the mail, Carol Wright Magazine, or not magazine, it's actually a catalog. And they have all sorts of kitschy as seen on TV stuff, right? But what a great starting place for, to research niche products and niche markets, okay? Canvas-free slip-ons. So you want to ask yourself, what kind of person would buy this? Maybe they have difficulty reaching down to their, to their feet. Maybe they, they need compression socks as well. Maybe um, you know, my mom was in a wheelchair in, towards the end of her life, and she couldn't reach her feet. So she had a device that would pull the socks on. So do you see how we can look at one picture and then um, just kind of go off on different tangents there and then start searching on Amazon for those keywords to see what comes up on Amazon? So all this is, guys, energy, energy balance bracelet. That's pretty cool. What a, what a neat potential private label product. Here's another one here, right? Look at all this good stuff. So pick up one of these great catalogs that normally we throw in the mail, right? This is platinum. When this comes in the mail for me, I love this thing. It gives me so many ideas as to what people, what people are shopping for, right? Okay, another thing. So I source wholesale, right? I get this catalog. I tell them not to send me a catalog. They do anyway because this thing is such, it's a waste of trees or so I thought until I decided to do this webinar and I got this yesterday. Plunk, right? This thing is massive. Look how big this thing is. And it's true brands. Go sign up for these guys as a supplier. All right. And I start sifting through. I'm like, oh my gosh. I mean, they, this gave me so many ideas for people who love, I'm a foodie. I love food. I love great food. I love wine and cheese and chocolate and everything that's bad for me, right? So as a foodie, this whole section here caught my eye. Um, and then there's, oh, this was pretty cool, right? Um, for 40 minutes. <laughs> Check out the bottle openers. How cool are they, right? You could go, you could go to AliExpress, not Alibaba, AliExpress, and you could source sucks, suckers like these right now, get them in about a month, and create maybe maybe a, a beer lovers bundle. Okay, check that out. Giant ice cube tray of the United States. Talk about inauguration. Okay, how great this thing would be. Maybe bundled with something else that was related to our incoming president. Whatever, right? Um, or a flag, a United States flag for July Fourth. So look at the catalogs that you order from wholesalers or. I didn't order this, but, you know, if it comes in, or just look at their websites to see what product ideas you might get from them. So I'm going to check the chat again, make sure we're on. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Alice, please mute. Alice, go ahead and mute. Um, somebody else wants me here. Catalogs are a good idea. Okay. So I'm going to switch back over. I really hope you guys can hear me. Um, I'm going to switch over to my screen again because I've got some more ideas to share with you. Share screen. Okay. Mail order catalogs, airline catalogs. If you're stuck on an airplane and they have in the back seat cover all of kind of like the Carol Wright catalog, right? Um, that mail order catalog, start looking through that. Great ideas for um, wholesale and private label in there. Continue. Okay. I got this one tonight. So a couple of hours ago, I'm driving back from Starbucks, and I pass the local community college. I live in Arizona. I live right up the street from ASU, and uh, they have this flashing billboard um, listing some classes that you can take. I'm like, oh my gosh, the continuing education catalog has a ton of great classes in there for people who want, you know, to, who want to learn. Um, I took a learn Italian class, right? I've taught a couple of classes in, in a different state through continuing education. So go to your local colleges or community college websites and look for community for the um, continuing education catalog. Get ideas in there for niches that people would be fanatical about. Facebook swap groups. This is how I started selling physical products online. So I joined Facebook groups for my local community. Um, and it's basically a kind of a Craigslist um, group, but it's for people in a specific community or a specific city if you have a small enough town or city. So you want to search, let's say you're in Milwaukee, Milwaukee swap group, Milwaukee online flea market or something, and you want to find the groups where people buy and sell things to each other and just look at what they're buying and selling. And you'll get idea. And then you, what you want to do is look for items that are being sold 
that have a lot of people that say, they, I want this, I want this, I'll take this, I want this next. And those are the products you, you want to pay attention to because they could potentially, it shows that there's a bigger market for that particular type of product. And geek.com, you know, I've unsubscribed for a lot of the emails I, I um, signed up for during Q4. I did a little RA during Q4 and OA, um, but I went back to full-time, to wholesale in January. But I always add that little extra sourcing for Q4. So I sign up for a lot of the retail sites. And I unsubscribed to most of them in the past week. But I kept geek.com because they have such cool stuff. Oh, my gosh. Some, I even bought, oh, my gosh, you're going you're gonna to laugh at me. I bought the Star Trek Communicator. I did. I will. I'll show you my weakness. Star Trek Bluetooth communicator. This will be on my desk working where I can, it's voice activated. I can actually um, just turn it on and Bluetooth it with my cell phone and then say, um, uh, Enterprise, call mom. Right? How cool is that? I'm such a geek, right? So geek.com has really cool new products. Not only that, it'll show you the things that people are fanatically passionate about like Star Trek or Star Wars in my case, um, Doctor Who is another one, right? Now, yeah, these are licensed products. But what you want to ask yourself is somebody who would be geeky enough to want this, what other type of things do they like, do they want? For instance, one of the calendars I bought yesterday for 50% off is a Star Trek one. Now, yeah, we're already into January, and I'm probably not going to use it for, as a calendar because I don't use Dex calendars, but it's a trivia calendar, and I'm a geek. So I totally bought it because, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm one of those fanatically passionate people about certain niche markets, mid-century modern. If you give me something from the 50s and you slap aqua paint on it, I'll buy it. I don't care. I'll buy it. It could be the nastiest thing, and I'd buy it because I have that fanaticism about that particular market. So I want you to look for those kinds of markets. All righty. Let's go back to... Share screen. Let me check chat. Make sure we're okay here, guys. You sold those communicators on Q4. Oh, my gosh. I'm not selling mine. <laughs> it was my Christmas gift to myself. Okay. So, yes, True Brands does have an online catalog, as do all, all online sellers, all wholesale companies. They all have it online. I just happen to have got the True Brands um, – home in my mailbox yesterday. It's like, this is a great way for me to show you guys um, some of the niche stuff just by, I'm not even looking at it, just flip it open and you can find all sorts of funky niche stuff, right? Okay, so let me go back to the presentation here. Share screen. I hope this is useful for you guys. I hope you guys are getting, um, getting some ideas on how to think, you know, past what you're seeing in front of you. I hope this is helpful. So geek.com. Um, current and up okay current and upcoming events so I just created this calendar of uh, a couple of hundred different of niche events that are happening in um, in 2017 for instance a couple of days ago was Elvis's birthday yes it happens every year the same date but oh my gosh is that a fanatical niche market Elvis lovers absolutely uh, and there's niche markets within that you know Elvis lovers Elvis music lovers those people will buy anything that's got Elvis on it right so I create, you can go ahead and check out the calendar at dealdivaholesale.com slash 2017 calendar. And um, I also put, uh, I bought, right before Christmas, I bought one of these things, but it was a gag calendar. It was 365 gag events, like, <clears throat> um, I don't know, uh, roast, your, roast marshmallows day. And I had, I paid the little girl across the street, she's 12 years old, and I paid her some money to put it all in an Excel file for her. So that's one of the bonuses on that calendar. You get those, those gag ones too, which are great for thinking about niche markets. Business to business. Okay, so what I mean by B2B is um, it brings me back to the publishing company I was talking about earlier. So we produce reports in the energy industry. So we're always looking for niches like um, uh, distributed generation or uh, the smart home is one that we're really big on right now. We're putting together a couple of reports on the smart home. So your refrigerator that talks to the internet, for example. Alexa is huge. The, the Amazon Alexa and Echo and Dot and all that, that is huge in, in forwarding um, the technology for a smart home. So you want to look at, and businesses uh, in the energy industry are interested in these things, so they know what technologies to invest in, um, what power generation fuels to, um, to invest in, whether or not they should 
uh, put their money in a specific type of power plant, for example. Well, you want to look at what companies are buying to improve their businesses. Good places to go for that is look at Office Depot, Staples, Costco, Sam's Club, anything that sells to, um, to corporations, to businesses. And also, there's an opportunity on Amazon. I haven't finished filling out mine yet, but it keeps asking me to every time I log into Seller Central to sell to businesses, right? So I'm not quite sure how it works, but I think you can have a separate pricing structure for businesses if they buy uh, a certain quantity from you. So if you start sourcing things that businesses want to buy or need for their operations, then you source that wholesale and you flip a bunch of it to business buyers, maybe at a lower margin, but you sell more of it by using Amazon's business sales. Just an idea. Look into it. What are businesses using? You know, yeah, they need pens and Sharpies. This past spring or summer, I think it was summer, I went to an auction and a company had closed down. I don't know if it was like a dentist office or a chiropractor or something. They went out of business and at the auction was a pallet of 3, 3M flip charts, Avery flip charts, uh, Post-it flip charts, a bunch of uh, markers, Sharpie markers, brand new in the boxes, but cases and cases of these things, uh, flip chart markers, um, Pendaflex holders. They were cases. Yeah. All brand new in the boxes. All I had to do was scan, you put my label in, send it to Amazon. Companies need these types of things, especially if it's a medical company where I think they have to keep, or also a, um, a CPA or a bookkeeper, they, I think they have to keep physical files. I know my, my old accountant used to keep a whole room full of just boxes of files because they have to keep them in physical format. They might have changed. I don't know. But companies need office supplies. So, Okay. Oh, that brings me to auction websites. So, some of you might know that I've sourced at auctions pallets of stuff, um, and that's how I've discovered some new types of products that I, well, not not new, but new to me. So, last year, that filter, I, I bought some um, Electrolux filters, and it was about, a, let's see, how many cases? It was a lot. It was a hundred per case, and I think I got like 16 or 18 cases of them. Um, but uh, okay. I got them in an auction, and I never knew that something like a filter existed for, I don't know if it's for a vacuum cleaner or for a, a water device or something, a, t a refrigerator maybe, I don't know. Um, but I didn't know it existed until I went to this auction and saw them and scanned them. Um, the other thing I found in an auction I didn't know about was um, a gentleman who fixes clocks went out of business. And, um, okay, who is drawing on my screen? That's weird. Anyway, uh, I bought all of his books, so Orology books, I, and I sent them straight on Amazon, and it was fabulous. So Orology books, I didn't know about Orology, people who fix clocks, until I went to this auction and saw it. So go to auction websites like AuctionZip, Goodwill.com, Invaluables, and Jay Levine's, just off the top of my head. You can even search auctions, and then your city, and see what auctions are local, and even go to an auction. You know, that's fun. Okay. So that's, that's we've gotten to the point where um, you guys can ask some questions. I want to make sure I'm respecting your time here. We're at, uh, we're at 40 minutes, which is good time. So let me check the chat here and see if you guys have any questions. Okay. Love the calendar. Thank you. Helen, not you. I'm not sure what that means. Okay, guys, do you have any questions about where you can um, source, where you can source stuff? Bring it on. Ask me anything. What was your calendar website again? Oh, yeah, the calendar I just put out is so cool. There it is, D dealdivawholesale.com slash 2017 calendar. And here's what it, it shows you sporting events, but really niche sporting events too, right? Like, um, like rugby, but that's huge in Europe and, and overseas and in South America. It's huge, right? So we'll show you sporting events, major and minor. Um, another sporting event that uh, I did well in is the monster trucks, believe it or not, right? And there's a movie coming out for monster trucks too. So you get double duty on that one. And think, if you guys are developing uh, merch shirts, if anybody in there is d designing their own web or shirts, all of these things can spark ideas for you to create shirts on, right? 
entertainment events, movie launches, TV show premieres. I did really great with zombie stuff during Q4 and leading up to Q4 because of the, um, the Walking Dead television show. And I timed some marketing around the launch of the show because I knew that there would be more searches for those keywords on Amazon and Google when the new series or the new season launched, right? So this calendar shows you what all of those dates are for this year. And I also added a column this year uh, showing when you should probably be sending in your product to Amazon for FBA in order to take advantage of those keywords. So celebrity birthdays, like I said, Elvis was just a couple of days ago. Funky niche observation days, um, like Telefairy Tale Day, Yo-Yo Days. There are people who collect yo-yos. I'm serious. There are people who collect. They're serious about it, right? Look into the yo-yo market. It's a sub-niche of the toy market. Okay, health awareness and events, student-related events, seasonal events, of course, like hunting season. Huge market, guys. Hunters and people who camp, camping and hunting. Where there's so many different products that you can source and so many problems that you can solve for them with those products. So I don't so much do, um, I don't do the, like the fad things. I didn't do the Hatchimals. I don't, I didn't do the pie face last year. I don't, I don't do the flash in the pan things. I want markets that are sustainable. I want products that solve a need or a problem for people so that they need to come back and buy it again when they, when they have that need again. Does that make sense? Okay, bonus gag holidays that my little neighbor girl did. Alyssa, if you're listening, I don't know if you're on, but Alyssa, you're famous. <laughs> so really cute, funny holidays. Read a roadmap day. Okay, so this led me to, um, in one of these catalogs I was looking through, there was a um, there, laminated maps. So look on Amazon. Go start your search with laminated map, and then ask yourself, what else can be laminated? How about a yoga chart, right? Um, how about a workout chart? How about uh, areas of the body, you know, muscle, muscle, muscle sets or whatever, right? What else could you laminate? Uh, cheat sheets for anything. Laminate them. I don't know if you can do that on Create Space, the lamination thing, uh, but look into it. I'm, I'm just talking about how to get ideas for niche markets in this particular webinar. Um, penguin, aware, penguin Awareness Day. Do you know how many people love penguins? Go Google it and see how many people, just Google I love penguins, see how many people actually search the same thing. A lot of people. And then um, if you pick up this calendar, I've also added my niche trade show directory. So we put together an Excel file of over 3,000 niche trade shows in both um, consumer markets and B2B markets. And these trades, and includes the websites and the dates and the city. So not only can you attend trade shows in your area you might not have known about, but you'll get ideas for niche markets from these trade shows that maybe you'd never heard of before. Then you can go to the website because I include the website address, uh, and you can search um, what who's exhibiting there, right? And who's speaking at these trade shows and look at what the topics are and see what people are um, are presenting about and what they're selling at the trade shows. And that's some product idea and potential wholesale supplier ideas too, right? Okay, let me switch back here and make sure I've got everybody. All right, we'll just go to the end here so you can see that again. All right, and come back here. All right, guys, have you got any questions? Let's see. Helen, I bought my son Christmas ornaments this year that were camping items. Get out. See, I never would have thought to put camping items and Christmas ornaments together. That's pretty cool. Thank you, Helen. Okay. Lisa says, say you're looking in a magazine for something interesting. Do you then contact the company and request wholesale account? Inf is that a trick question, Lisa? Is that a trick question? Because if I say no, you know I'd be joking. Well, yeah. Contact the company, request wholesale account information. Absolutely. Um, is bundling the only way to su be successful on Amazon via wholesale? Absolutely not. I've gone through many price lists only to find a margin so low that you aren't worth it. If yes, do you mix products from different I, – when I bundle, I absolutely get my products for that bundle from different suppliers. Absolutely. I want to bulletproof my bundles. And I'm actually um, – uh, a, a course on bulletproof bundling. In fact, it, it's, it's called bulletproofbundling.com, I think. Um, and that'll be next month. I'll put that. I'll be finished putting that together. So, 
when you ask, let's see, contact resale account. Hey, Lisa, I've got, if you also go to dealdivawholesale.com, that's dealdivawholesale.com, sorry, I spit there. I think I need some water. Uh, I've got on the right hand side, you'll see you can click on that little ebook. It's a free guide to getting started in wholesale. Go download that. It's just a few pages. It's like eight pages, nine pages, but it gives you the this is exactly what you have to do. There's a, a script in there, how to how to approach a wholesaler. There's all of the websites for every single state on how to apply for your reseller license because you have to have a reseller license for a wholesaler to, to sell to you. So go download, download that free ebook at dealdivawholesale.com. Let me put that in here, the chat for you. Dealdivawholesale.com, boom. And just go over there and... Um, Hmm. I'm not quite sure how to put that in the chat. If somebody will write dealdivawholesale.com in the chat for me. <laughs> there we go. I think I figured it out. I told you I was just learning Zoom here. <laughs> there we go. Aircraft or flying items, yes. And, and those are even, there are niche markets within that. So aircraft and flying items, like Colleen says, can mean people who fly airplanes, um, professional pilots, hobby pilots, or people who build model airplanes, right? Or drones, that's another one, right? Or people who like to learn about flying um, through simulation software. I mean, you can take anything that you list here, we can break that down into all sorts of funky little niche. Someone has their camera on, okay. It's not me? You can see someone other than me? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Betsy, turn your camera off. It's all good. We love you, Betsy. Okay, let me scroll up here, and I love that idea, Christmas ornaments, camping items, bundling the only way to be successful via Amazon. No. Now, um, Carolyn, is it Caroline or Carolyn? I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Carolyn. Um, so when I first started, I was getting those lists from wholesale companies and chunking them through software like Price Checker 2, and I was using another piece of software too, and the resulting lists were ginormous. And I wasn't finding a whole lot that, that was profitable for me. Um, so I think as a starting point to get ideas for products, you can do that. But I reverse source now. I start with what I'm talking about right now, finding niche markets, finding niche ideas that meet our criteria, criteria for a fin fanatical niche market, people who have disposable income, buy online, and are passionate about that particular niche, right? And then I go on Amazon and I do that reverse source. I ser search for, um, you know, camping ornament, for example, and I find what comes up. And then I use, I use a, uh, an extension called Jungle Scout, which anybody who's sourcing for Amazon, anybody who's using Amazon as a um, as research tool, you have to get Jungle Scout. You can, there's a link on dealdivawholesale.com that you can click on and get it. Um, there's a fee for it. I'm not sure what it is, but it's a one-time fee. It's not monthly and it's paid for itself over and over and over again. And it's also great for private labelers, right? So I would search that. Use Jungle Scout. Jungle Scout will tell me all, um, how many how many units are sold a month, how many sellers are on there selling it, what's my net profit margin is, if Amazon is on it, how many reviews and what the reviews are. Uh, Jungle Scout is a game changer. So like you said, Carolyn, it, it is tough if you go to every single supplier and try to run all of their, first of all, a lot of them don't have their lists in CSV format. So you can't even get, they don't have UPC codes available for, for buyers. Um, so it's, it's a harder road to take. And second, the way that you get great pricing for wholesale is um, not traveling. You, you need to travel the road untraveled. That was awkwardly put, but um, it's about developing relationships with your suppliers. It is absolutely about having the convers having conversations with them, finding out how you can help them sell better on Amazon, um, finding out you know offer them what you can do to improve listings that that their brand is is on. You know, offering added value that no other Amazon is seller is offering. You need to do the extra work. And, and also ask. So when you have a relationship with them, you ask for the discount. You, they, wholesalers have different tiers of pricing. And a lot of people who are starting out in wholesale don't know that. So they just say, well, that's the wholesale pricing. I can't make any money on that. This wholesale thing doesn't work. They go away, less competition for those who are doing it right. 
right? So you want to talk to your suppliers and say, look, I am anticipating buying X amount of volume from you over the course of this year. What's the best price you can give me? What is your best pricing tier that I can get right now? I mean, you just have the conversation. Don't worry about your competition. Worry about your relationship with your supplier. Does anybody have any questions? Because we're kind of getting off a little bit off track, and I could talk about um, I could talk about wholesale forever, and I'll do more webinars on this stuff. Uh, in fact, I'm doing a demystifying wholesale webinar on Saturday. For those of you who work real jobs and you're tired during the week, I get it. Um, I'm doing it on Saturday. It's going to be 11 a.m. Eastern. Demystifying wholesale where I'm going to ask, you can ask any questions, just like you did here, any questions you want about wholesale. And you can sign up for that. Go to dealdivawholesale.com, and there's a, link for, um, there's a link for that there. And go ahead, and um, if you want to grab that calendar tonight, it's 39 bucks, and it's the entire year. Plus, you get um, the, the gag calendar of another 365 events. Plus, you get the trade show directory of over 3,000 niche trade shows. So uh, have you got any questions? I'm looking in the chat here. I want to make sure I've got everybody answered. What keyword research tools do you use? Um, Kay, I really like Merchant Words. I use that. Uh, I think I pay like eight bucks a month or something like that. Uh, I don't remember. Um, but you can use it, the free version as well. And I love Google Trends and Google itself because Google has um, predictive search. Do you guys know what that is? So if I were to type in, um, I don't know, let's just choose one of these, these great niche products here, Restore Firm, you, coconut, if I were to type in coconut oil face cream on either Amazon or Google, you notice when you type something into Google, it pops down different options. Those are things that other people typed, and they're in order of how many times they were searched on, both in Amazon and Google. So uh, Google and Amazon are the best research tools out there, the best keyword research tools that you can find. Let's see, has I missed any, have I missed anybody's questions here? I'm not sure if I missed your questions, but I'm going to post a, um, I'm going to post this replay. It'll take me a little bit to upload it and, um, and get the replay up on Deal Diva Barbara Facebook group. And I'll also put it on the dealdivawholesale.com website, which I just launched today. Thank you. So please go there and let me know what you think about the design and the content. I put a bunch of content up today. And like I said, I'm going to be adding more content um, every single day to dealdivawholesale.com. And um, if you haven't downloaded the free guide to how to start in wholesale, it's right there on the right-hand side of dealdivawholesale.com. Go ahead and download it for free. And go join the Facebook group. And the Facebook group is www.facebook.com slash groups slash Deal Diva. Deal Diva, huh? There we go. Boom. Okay, go join that. And um, I think I've got everybody's questions answered. I hope you guys got a ton of ideas tonight. And again, please um, join me on Deal Diva Barbara on Facebook and ask any questions you want, and I will be more than happy to answer them. And I will talk to you guys later. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being on tonight. You, you guys have an amazing week and uh, an amazing 2017. Talk to you soon.